Ο τελευταίος μας ομιλητής για σήμερα έχει αναγγελθεί από την κυρία Αντωνάκου στην αρχή της σημερινή ημέρας και είναι ο Σακίπ Σαΐχ. Ο Σακίπ, λοιπόν, έχασε την όρασή του στα επτά του χρόνια. Αυτό δεν τον εμπόδισε λίγα χρόνια πριν ως υπάλληλο της Microsoft πλέον να δημιουργήσει το Seeing AI, μια εφαρμογή που επιτρέπει σε χρήστες με μειωμένη όραση να καταλαβαίνουν τι υπάρχει στο περιβάλλον τους. Παρακαλώ, υποδεχθείτε στη σκηνή τον κύριο Σάκη Ψέικ, Tech Lead της ομάδας AI and Research για τη Microsoft. Thank you. It's a great privilege to be speaking in such a great venue and in Athens, a city with so much history and culture. As I was just looking around the city, I realized that the architects and the builders of thousands of years ago, the amazing buildings that have been built for thousands of years and which are still here today. So, As engineers, it made me think and reflect on what are we building for the future. I personally, I'm a software engineer at Microsoft. I lead a team where we are looking at how we can leverage emerging technologies like artificial intelligence to empower people with disabilities and everyone else. In particular, we made the Seeing AI app Which I, will to, which I will be talking to you about in just a moment. But first, let me take a step back and reflect on the journey that brought me here. Technology has been a part of my life since I was a child, since I lost my sight at the age of seven. Technology has been the great equalizer. As I went to school, really it was the perfect place to learn about technology. And it's no surprise to me that I ended up becoming hooked on it and it became my career. Because I was surrounded by technology that was there that the people had created to solve the problems of life. Whether that was the software that made the computers talk or the software that made braille documents or whether it was the technology that could raise up paper to make uh, diagrams that you could feel, and so many other things besides. I, I grew up in this environment where there was invention after invention to empower people, like myself, with vision impairments to do more. And this gave me this idea that what if, when I was older, one day I could be making some new technologies which help people. So, From that young age, maybe the first example of this was even just the manual typewriter. I remember the freedom that I had when I could write a document and show it to my parents and say, look, mum, look what I wrote. But even something so simple had such a big impact on my life because technology can close the gap between what I was capable of doing and what I was able to do. And this lesson stayed with me through my life. I then went on to study computer science at university, and things were not always so easy in a less supportive environment. While I ended up graduating top of my class, there were so many challenges along the way, and this quote from Helen Keller, one of my role models, comes to mind. While there is much suffering in the world, there is also a lot of overcoming of it. And when I think about that, Maybe today we would say that Helen Keller was a hacker. So wherever there's a problem, we can find the solutions. And there are so many examples of this. So instead of thinking of disability as a problem, really it's just a state where we can come up with the new solution. And I realized that actually it's all about the people actually. When the right people come together, you can build those solutions that can break down those barriers in society, that can make us all equal and make us able to do the things we didn't think we could. And there's a whole history of this. So if we look at this list of 
technologies which were initially inspired by disability. They're everything in life. Whether we're talking about the telephone and Alexander Graham Bell being inspired by his mother being hard of hearing, or whether we're talking about on the touchscreen keyboards, or even the touchscreen that was on the iPhone that was developed in response to someone having RSI and wanting an easier way to type whether we're talking for the abilities of computers to speak, to listen, and so much more. Each one of these has a really great story behind it about how someone with a challenge came together with someone with the ability to create a solution. And then those technologies went on to become part of every day. If you, I'm sure most of you have a supercomputer in your pocket which can hear what you're saying that can understand that, that can speak to you, that has a touch screen and an on-screen keyboard, and so much more, each of which was put together because, as I've said just now, someone with a challenge came together with the right team. So let us say maybe then that disability is a driver for innovation. What do I mean by this? So, this was a realization I had in my career, that in fact, so many of the early adopters of technologies, including artificial intelligence, are, are the people with disabilities who have mo more to gain. And as a result, they are willing to try out new things, those things which everyone else will be using years down the road. And that was the realization I had later on in my career at Microsoft. For the first 10 years, I focused on just, you know, general business applications. I worked on Bing and Cortana and different things in AI. But then I thought, we had this opportunity to build anything you wanted. And I thought, why don't we use disability as a driver for innovation? So I went around the company and found all the greatest AI that the company was developing. I got together with like-minded people and said, how can we make the best solution for someone who's visually impaired? After several years of effort involving people from around the company and around the world, we came up with the Seeing AI mobile app. I'd like to show that to you now. Seeing AI is a Microsoft research project for people with visual impairments. The app narrates the world around you by turning the visual world into an audible experience. Point your phone's camera, select a channel, and hear a description. The app recognizes saved friends. Jenny near top right, three feet away. Describes the people around you, including their emotions. 28-year-old female wearing glasses looking happy. It reads text out loud as it comes into view, like on an envelope. Ken Lawrence, P.O. Box. Or a room entrance. Conference 2005. Or scan and read documents like books and letters. The app will guide you and recognize the text with its formatting. Top and left edge is not visible. Hold steady. Lease agreement. This agreement exec. When paying with cash, the app identifies currency bills. 20 US dollars. When looking for something in your pantry or at the store, use the barcode scanner with audio cues to help you find what you want. Campbell's tomato soup. When available, hear additional product details. Heat in microwave bowl on height. And even hear descriptions of images in other apps like Twitter by importing them into Seeing AI. A close-up of Bill Gates. Finally, explore our experimental features like scene descriptions to get a glimpse of the future. I think it's a young girl throwing a frisbee in the park. Experience the world around you with the Seeing AI app from Microsoft. It's been such an amazing journey working on Seeing AI. Since we released the free app, we hear from customers all around the world about how they're using it in their daily life. From the gentleman who was always concerned about how much change he'd get, so he'd always pay in single dollar bills, but because all the notes feel the same. But now with seeing AI, he just holds the phone over it and can hear the denomination. Or the teacher in the UK who mounted the phone opposite the door and can hear the names of all the students as they walk into the classroom. And of course, now he knows who's turning up late. 
all the way through to people using this in business for reading documents, or just to sort out their groceries, or even just to do things we never imagined, like a gentleman who was using it in a, after a hurricane to use the very basic early AI we have for describing a scene, just to know whether there was something in the way. We recently released a feature where the AI not only knows what's in a photo, but whereabouts it is. And you can move your finger around to feel where the different objects are. And we heard from a mother who said that she would, could now explore all the photos of her children and her family and organize that family photo album that we all have. So that's probably my favorite part of my job, is hearing from customers, hearing all the incredible ways that they are using this technology. And we're always looking at what the next thing is. What is the next wave of technology? How do we work with our customers to find out the problems and then to find those solutions as well? And then we also are looking at how can we take the technology that we have by designing through these extreme cases and then bring that to everyone else. Because while there is permanent disability, there's also people with temporary disabilities like a broken arm or people in situations like having a light in your eye or having um, a loud noise on a building site or just having your hands full. So as we look at designing for disabilities, we're also looking at how to bring that to everyone. And there are so many colleagues working on incredible projects around the company. I'd like to show you in just a moment some of those two, some of the projects which are just taking AI and other emerging technologies and using them to change people's lives. We have so many peoples who are non-verbal, but still have so much to say. I want the exact same information that my hearing friends have. There are barriers to communication everywhere, but I think it's time we look at the barriers as opportunities to reach out to everyone. Soundscape fills in a lot of the mental map as you move. Approaching intersection. You can just put it in your pocket and go. With ALS, you become locked in. But we see technology as a way to give back what ALS has taken away. There's no better feeling than to hear a child say something that they've wanted to say and the look on their face after they've, they've been able to say it. When it's reading, I see spaces between the words, and it's easy to focus on. Andre realized that here was something that could change his life. Now that I have my phone, I can see exactly what was said, and that's been a huge help to me. The system is learning as it goes, and the accuracy has improved tremendously. Students can pick any language that they choose to receive the information. It's like we jumped into the future. Because communication is very important for all of us, and we just want to be together and not feel left out. Aider les personnes avec autisme à communiquer, il y a des images. Je parle, je donne une information à Arthur, et elle est traduite par l'application El Picto instantanément en pictogramme, et après, d'une façon orale. Va t'habiller et te brosser les dents. On va pouvoir remettre en place une communication qui est plus spontanée. Je crois que ça vraiment, ça aide à recréer du lien. Both my wife and I are totally blind, and we have a three-year-old son that's in preschool. He can see, but his parents can't. So to be able to know what's going on at his school is everything. The Seeing AI app has the ability to allow me access to the visual world. Artificial intelligence is beginning to have an impact on the lives of people with disabilities, but it's, it's only going to grow. There is still so much out there uh, to be done. So just to close, I'm so excited by technology and where it's going. 
And so for each and every one of you, regardless of which sector you're in, if you work with your customers to find out what are the problems and then work with them to build a solution. And it's not about technology replacing humans. I think as we've seen here, there's so much potential to find what are the things that humans do incredibly well. And then to build on top of that, to use the technology to empower us, each and every one of us, to do even more. Thank you. Thank you very much, Hakeem. I will keep what uh, you said, uh, Ellen Keller's quote, that there's much suffering in the world, but there's much overcoming of it as well. Do you think that uh, it will be possible to make people with disabilities through AI to contribute more even to art? I know that there are already so many incredible artists with disabilities, but yes, so I've heard of a graffiti artist who has been able to use eye gaze technology where the camera is able to um, look at the direction of his eye and he's able to use that to generate art again. So definitely, that's just one example. I, there's also um, a hands-free music project which some of my colleagues worked on where it was possible to use your, again, eye gaze to create music. So a lot of potential for creative, their creative arts. There's nothing we cannot overcome, right? There may be some things, but there's so many things we can do, and there's so much potential out there. And now, after seeing AI, what is next for you? Always looking at what are the new problems, what are the new challenges that the people we talk to face, and then how do we bring AI and other technologies to, uh, to break down those barriers, to make a more equal world. Thank you very much, Sakim. Thank you.